Yo, welcome guys, raising toast to you. I'm raising a toast to you. On today's walk around the neighborhood, I listened to Michelle Obama's book, Becoming. This is actually only the second time I've read it, so I need to, I wanna give it at least 20 reads so I can understand it fully, comprehend what she's talking about, what everything means. Let's get into it, I had some fun. And what we've got, we've got five takeaways from chapter two of Becoming. So let's get right into it. I'm gonna talk as short as possible so Michelle can talk as long as possible. In a sense, the sorting bee was Michelle Obama's first childhood victory. Let's get into it. The two smartest kids in my kindergarten class were Teddy, a Korean American boy, and Chiaka, an African American girl who both would remain at the top of the class for years to come. I was driven to keep up with them. When it came my turn to read the words off the teacher's manila cards, I stood up and gave it everything I had, rattling off red, green, and blue without effort. Purple took a second though, and orange was hard, but it wasn't until the letters W-H-I-T-E came up that I froze altogether. My throat instantly dry, my mouth awkward and unable to shape the sound as my brain glitched madly, trying to dig up a color that resembled whoa. It was a straight up choke. I felt a weird airiness in my knees as if they might buckle. But before, but before they did, Mrs. Burroughs instructed me to sit back down. And that's exactly when the word hit me in its full and easy perfection. White. White. The word was white. Lying in bed that night with my stuffed animals packed around my head, I thought only of white. I spelled it in my head backward and forward, chastising myself for my own stupidity. The embarrassment felt like a weight like something I'd never shake off, even though I knew my parents wouldn't care whether I'd read every card correctly. I just wanted to achieve. Or maybe I didn't want to be dismissed as incapable of achieving. I was sure my teacher had now pegged me as someone who couldn't read or worse, didn't try. I obsessed over the dime-sized gold foil stars that Mrs. Burr the next morning in class, I asked for a do-over. When Mrs. Burroughs said no, cheerily adding that we kindergartners had other things to get to, I demanded it. Pity the kids who then had to watch me face the color cards a second time, going slower now, pausing deliberately to breathe after I'd pronounce each word, refusing to let my nerves short-circuit my brain. And it worked. Through black, orange, purple, and especially white. I was practically shouting the word white before I'd even seen the letters on the card. I like to imagine now that Mrs. Burroughs was impressed with this little black girl who'd found the courage to advocate for herself. I didn't know whether Teddy or Chica had even I noticed. I don't know about Ms. Burroughs. I was... My second grade classroom turned out to be a mayhem of unruly kids and flying erasers, which had not been the norm in either my experience or Craig's. All this seemed due to a teacher who couldn't figure out how to assert control, who didn't seem to like children even. Beyond that, it wasn't clear that anyone was particularly bothered by the fact that the teacher was incompetent. The students used it as an excuse to act out, and she seemed to think only the worst of us. In her eyes, we were a class of bad kids, though we had no guidance and no structure and had been sentenced to a grim, underlit room in the basement of the school. Every hour there felt hellish and long. I sat miserably at my desk in my puke green chair, Pew green being the official color. When I got angry as a kid, I almost always funneled it through my mother. As I fumed about my new teacher, she listened placidly, saying things like, oh dear, and oh really. 
She never indulged my outrage, but she took my frustration seriously. If my mother was somebody different, she might have done the polite thing and said, just go and do your best. But she knew the difference. She knew the difference between whining and actual distress. Without telling me, she went over to the school and began a weeks-long process of behind-the-scenes lobbying, which led to me and a couple of other high-performing kids getting quietly pulled out of the class, given a battery of tests, and about a week later, reinstalled permanently into a bright and orderly third-grade class upstairs, governed by a smiling, no-nonsense teacher who knew her stuff. It was a small but life-changing move. I didn't stop to ask myself then, what would happen to all the kids who'd been left in the basement with the teacher who couldn't teach? Now that I'm an adult, I realize that kids know at a very young age when they're being devalued. But before I could find my way into the fold of girls my age who hung out at the parkway, I faced a test. It came in the form of Dee Dee, a girl who went to a nearby Catholic school. Dee Dee was athletic and pretty, but she wore her face in a pout and was always ready with an eye roll. She often sat on her family's stoop next to another more popular girl named Deneen. Deneen was always friendly, but Dee Dee didn't seem to like me. I don't know why. Every time I went over to Euclid Parkway, She'd make quiet, cutting remarks, as if just by showing up, I'd managed to ruin everyone's day. As the summer went on, Dee Dee's comments only grew louder. My morale began to sink. I understood that I had choices. I could continue on as the picked-on new girl. I could give up on the parkway and just give up on the parkway and just go back to my toys at home. Or I could attempt to earn Dee Dee's respect. And inside that last choice lay another one. I could try to reason with Dee Dee to win her over with words or some other form of kid diplomacy. Or I could just shut her up. The next time Dee Dee made one of her remarks, I lunged for her, summoning everything my dad had taught me about how to throw a punch. The two of us fell to the ground, fists flailing and legs thrashing. Every kid in Euclid Parkway instantly clustered in a tight knot around us, their hollers fueled by excitement and grade school bloodlust. I can't remember who finally pulled us apart, whether it was Deneen or my brother or maybe a parent who'd been called to the scene. But when it was done... Some sort of silent baptism had taken I was officially an accepted member of the neighborhood tribe. Dee Dee and I were unharmed, dirt-stained, and panting, and destined never to be close friends. But at least I'd earned her respect. One of my early Socratic victories came from a question driven by self-interest. Why do we have to eat eggs for breakfast? Which led to a discussion about the necessity of protein, which led me to ask why peanut butter couldn't count as protein, which eventually, after more debate, led to my mother revising her stance on eggs, which I had never liked to eat in the first place. For the next nine years, knowing that I'd earned it, I'd made myself a fat peanut butter and jelly sandwich for breakfast each morning and consumed not a single egg. Hey. So never sugarcoated what they took to be the harder truths about life. Craig, for example, got a new bike one summer and rode it east to Lake Michigan to the paved pathway along Rainbow Beach where you could feel the breeze off the water. He'd been promptly picked up by a police officer who accused him of stealing it unwilling to accept that a young black boy would have come across a new bike in an honest way. The officer, an African-American man himself, ultimately got a brutal tongue lashing from my mother, who made him apologize to Craig. What had happened, my parents told us, was unjust, 
but also unfortunately common. The color of our skin made us vulnerable. It was a thing we'd always have to navigate. My father's habit of driving us. Yo, thank you guys for tuning in. You guys are welcome for that chapter two summary. A lot of YouTubers always say thank you, but they don't say you're welcome. I put in some grind to make that video, to make it easier for you to digest chapter two of Michelle Obama's Becoming or to make you more interested in getting her book. I think you should get her book. Do it and read it 20 times <laughs> or 100. Be sure you like, be sure you comment, subscribe. Go look at my gamer channel, Rec Tips Riz. I'm making a movement, baby.